I'm sure nearly every single person watching this video has done a Bundesliga, a Premier League or a La Liga career mode in the past couple of weeks. I thought I'd make this to suggest some of my favourite minor leagues, so I've come up with my top 5 leagues and I'll give you some pros and cons of each one of them and why you should consider them for your next save. Let's not waste any time and let's get straight in at my 5th favourite minor league on FIFA 22 and it's actually the Turkish Super League. I really enjoy this league because you can actually play it really realistically really easily. They only have two different squad rules, one of them is a maximum of 10 foreign players in the squad and their other one is 6 foreign players on the field at any one point. So you can have a bunch on the bench as long as they're not all on the field at the same time. I think that's really cool. At the moment, there's also a really big surge of good Turkish talent popping up all around Europe. You've got players like Orkan Koku, Demiral and Kabak who are all going to be really good on FIFA if you can get them into your team within a couple of seasons. There's also quite a few failed wonder kids out there as well. Maybe you can try and resurrect the careers of Emery Moore, Gokan Torre or Kerim Fry, who all had over 84 potential on old FIFAs. They're all now in the low 70s. I think two of them are 70 overall and Emery Moore is 72. So if you want to rebuild a team with some of these failed wonder kids and see if you can use dynamic potential to get them to where they used to be, then go for it. It's also a really good league if you're like me and like signing big name old players. Pjanic, Ozil and Hamsik are already in the league, but personally I really enjoy signing players like a Giroud or a Gorkov, you know, these big name players that used to be famous and maybe aren't so good anymore. So that's a couple of the pros of playing in the Turkish league. There are actually three cons that I've come up with as well though. A lot of the teams have financial issues, so you do have a very small transfer budget which can make it hard to sort of meet board expectations. That's another con as well. The board expectations are usually a bit ambitious. They'll want you to bring in big name players or try and win the league when you're nowhere near ready for the budget or the squad. And a lot of the teams have really old squads, so your overall ratings will all dip throughout the season, but the board will think you're going to be improving and it does make it a bit tough. It's an easy league to get sacked from, but I guess that is kind of the reputation that comes with playing in Turkey anyway. Moving on to the fourth league on my list, and we're heading to South America for the Argentinian Primera Division. It's now fully licensed, every single team is in the game, and it's a really good way to try out both the Libertadores and the Sudamericana, which are their versions of the Europa League and the Champions League if you aren't aware. The good thing about the Argentinian Premier Division is that it has a lot of teams to pick from. There are actually 26 in there, which is the most out of any league except for the MLS, which has 27. I've put this in my pros because it really does help you find a team where you enjoy the kits, the stadium and the squads. There's always going to be what at least one team in there that you enjoy all three for. It's also a good league to do a good club and country with because the Argentinian national team, of course, is one of the best in the world. You'll already be using elite level players from day one. Of course, you're Messi, Di Maria, maybe Aguero if he hasn't retired on your game yet. So you're going to have this base where you're going to get your youth academy players in there and hopefully get them up to the same level, which would be a really fun save in my opinion. Resigning some big names back to South America, of course, is always realistic, especially Argentina and Brazil. Both of these leagues love signing big name players back to their league. The league also has a couple of real stadiums, which is always a big plus, but the unique league structure is one of the weirdest things about Argentina. Unlike most other leagues where you play a home and away fixture with every single team in the league, in Argentina, you only play one match against each team, so home or away. This is how the league finishes after 25 games, so it is probably the shortest league on FIFA. If you're into getting through your seasons really fast and onto the next career mode, then maybe the Argentinian Premier League is for you. There are some cons that come with the league, however. There are barely any real faces in the league, and all of the ones that are are usually at Boca and River Plate. It's got standard presentations, so it's not got a unique scoreboard or anything like that. And the difference between the best and the worst teams in the league is pretty big. It could result in some big scores where either you get smashed or you're smashing other teams. But despite this, it is actually super easy to become the best team in the league after just one or two seasons. It's because player values are so low, so you can just sign every other team in your league best players and just make this super club with barely any transfer budget so that's probably the biggest con with playing in Argentina. Staying in the Americas, going to the MLS, and this is a league I've talked about plenty on this channel. I've actually made a full video about it, so check the card at the top right now if you want to see that. But to sum it up, the pros are it has a unique match day presentation. You've got the American national team on the game, so you can do club and country here. You can follow the real rules, which are super easy. It makes the career a bit more unique and balanced if you do. 
as I mentioned for the Argentina part, they actually have 27 different teams in the MLS. So you've always got that kit stadium team combination that you'll enjoy. And the playoffs and cup system is in the game. And it's the only league that you can win two cups for by winning the league. If you want to know a bit more, as I said, check out the card that was on top of the video. There are some cons of playing in America. Unique things like the super draft are not in game, but you can simulate this. And again, I mentioned that in the video, I've already mentioned twice. And other teams, of course, aren't following the real MLS rules. It's a bit annoying and something I wish EA would put in the game. But you know, wage budgets are blown on tons of players when they shouldn't be. And they'll eventually have fully non-US teams, which again, pretty unrealistic for the MLS. So now moving on to the top two leagues for me on FIFA. Polish Extra Kalaza is number two. There's a lot of good pros for this, but I think some of the bigger ones are the history and rivalries that help you spice up your role-playing saves. And I really like a lot of the stadiums and the weather that happens in Poland. Now, this might sound a bit weird, but the weather is actually set to snow for quite a lot of matches, and it does give you a bit more of a different atmosphere than if you're playing somewhere like Spain and it's just rain and sun. Apart from the weather and the stadiums, it's a really good league for bringing back big name players. People like Kamil Glick, Rybus and Krychowiak were all big name players two or three seasons ago. They might not be now, but maybe you've got an end goal of trying to bring them all back to Poland. And eventually, of course, Lewandowski might return. There's also quite a lot of real face players who are quite old, so you can retire these as managers if you want a Polish manager. It's also got, surprisingly, a really good name pool for regen and youth academy players. So if that's something that annoys you getting 10 Matt Smiths when you're playing in England, then maybe go for Poland. However, as every single league does, it also does come with its cons. In my opinion, a lot of the kits in this league are very ugly. There's a lot of red and yellow, which I don't really think works on a kit and I don't really like. And you'll be playing against one of those most weeks. It's quite far from being European level as well. So if you do manage to get to Europa League or Champions League, you probably will just get smashed by PSG, you know, 4-5-0 pretty easily. It'll take you a couple of seasons to build up. But again, that could also probably be a pro if you do like longer saves. There's not a lot of money in the league, which is similar to this last point where it's going to take you a lot of time to get to the sort of level if you want to try and compete in Europe. And youth players do actually come through usually higher rated than some of your first team. There are a lot of teams in this league where they have 60 rated players and you'll get your youth players coming through at 62, 63 and going straight in at 16, which isn't the most realistic, let's be honest. Despite its pros and cons, I really do recommend you give the extra Klaza a go, but first place on this list is the one you should probably do first, and that's the Belgian Pro League. Now, compared to its neighbour, the Dutch Eredivisie, you might think this is a much worse league, but actually, on average, the potential in the Belgian Pro League is only on average 0.15 below what you would get in the more popular Eredivisie. With 18 teams in the league, you do have quite a bit of choice. And surprisingly, there are about eight or nine teams who at the start of the season are worthy of winning the title. It's a very competitive league and I think it's going to be a really fun one no matter who you pick. The Belgian national team is in game. So again, it's a good league to do club and country saves. Similar to Argentina, you've already got an elite level squad at national team level. So you're going to be trying to improve this with your youth academy players. Of course, you've also got Belgium's golden generation's last chance of actually winning something. People like Hazard, Lukaku, De Bruyne, they're not getting any younger. And finally, the best pro in my opinion is how the actual league is structured. So seasons run from early August to late April, which is a fairly short season, and you only actually play 34 matches in the regular season. After this, you enter one of two playoffs according to your position in the regular season. The playoffs one, which is also known as the title or the champions playoffs, is contested by the top four teams in the regular season. Each club plays each other twice and the winner of these playoffs wins the title. The playoffs two is also known as the Europa League playoffs or the Europe playoffs. They're contested by the teams ranked fifth to eight in the regular season, divided into four groups of four teams and they play each other once. In real life, the team that finishes 18th get relegated and the team that finishes 17th has a one-off match with the second place team from the second division. But of course, the second division isn't actually on FIFA, so this isn't actually in the game. 
It's one of the biggest cons about doing any of the leagues on this list that none of them actually have second divisions. As cool as it would be to have the Argentinian second division or maybe the um, American college system or something, I really do wish EA would add them in. Unfortunately, they only really have the big leagues already having these second division players. I know quite a lot of them would probably be 50 rated, but it would still be cool to have them added in. The other cons for playing in Belgium are that the player prices are really low compared to their overall ratings, so their AI will never bid what your players are actually worth. And finally, the potential isn't evenly balanced. Of the 8 or 9 big teams that start out winning the league, you will actually only have 2 or 3 that have potential to keep up at that level. So after 2 or 3 seasons, you'll drop away from having an 8 team battle every season to having a standard 2 to 3 horse race every year, which, you know, is still fun if you're up there as well, but everything's better when there's more people involved. Anyway, hopefully you've got a good idea for a league that you want to do in the future. Subscribe if you want to see more like this, follow me on Twitter, message me on Discord, all that normal stuff, like the video, and hopefully I'll see you very soon for another video. Thank you and goodbye.